<laughs> we got a Seinfeld alert. Uh oh. Weeru weeru weeru. Dude, there's like infinite Seinfeld now. Okay, you got to be real with me. How long did you watch it for? I say I've maybe watched in total like an hour of AI generated Seinfeld. Okay, I mean that sounds about right. At least yeah. like honest watching. You post it. And I probably left it on for about five hours during work, but only tuned in for a little bit. <laughs> so you were just listening to them the whole time? I was. <laughs> I was. <laughs> like background? Yeah. Who's your favorite character? Um, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't Larry Feinberg. <laughs> um, just because of the... Uh, uh, he just bombs every time he does stand up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's the thing. Like... I've recently started watching Seinfeld for real, for real, Mm -hmm. like last few months. And I've been hesitant to like watch it all because I was afraid that it would like finish, you know? Yeah. Like Seinfeld would end. And um, I don't have that fear anymore. Yeah. There's just a a new way you can get Seinfeld all the time. Is this only on Twitch? Yeah. We should mention Twitch TV slash watch me forever. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I kind of want this one. It doesn't feel too different than watching real Seinfeld. That's a real like it kind of captured that essence pretty well. Yeah. You know, the characters sort of have that whole really rude neighbor aspect thing going on. And George mm-hmm. Costanza is just the biggest beefcake on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Quite a tank. What do you think is next for AI generated sitcoms? Hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I don't watch a lot of sitcoms. I mean, I guess they'll just tackle anything with a laugh track. Like, obviously, they could make one for friends, and maybe that Mm. would be tolerable for you. The Big Bang Theory would be hilarious. Dude, yeah. Written by AI, (laughs) because it kind of already sounds like it is. Yeah. (laughs) Bazinga. Like, what would they give that AI-generated Sheldon to say? Yeah. (laughs) The AI would just probably throw it into, like, mid-sentences all the time. Um, Dude, all I know is Seinfeld. Would you recommend this over real Seinfeld? What would you, Mm. if you had to give advice to our like kind of Seinfeld curious watchers? Yeah. Would they, should they start with the AI or the real thing? I would start with the real thing. Yeah. I'd say Larry Feinberg's jokes kind of rely on some context. Yeah. You need to know that he's also not a funny comedian on the show too. (laughs) I don't think his jokes. So I, I really like Seinfeld, but I don't think the stand up jokes hit there either. (laughs) I don't think so either. Shit, now I'm wondering if I actually like Seinfeld. I just like whenever Kramer busts in the door and like the little things George gets upset about, they're pretty funny. I just think that the type of comedy that has stood the test of time is um, Slice of Life. Just shout outs to Slice of Life comedy, I guess. Yeah. I like shit about nothing. And that's that's kind of all Seinfeld is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it? Wait, what's the show actually called? Seinfeld? <laughs> no. The stream. <laughs> It's called like nothing forever, I think. Uh, yeah, it's called nothing forever. Yeah. Um, Seinfeld, King of the Hill, Reply, nineteen eighty-eight. What, what is Reply, nineteen eighty-eight? Nichi Joe. Come on, you know James. <laughs> I just I didn't. <laughs> no, it's like a K drama. That's like slice of life. It's fantastic. Okay. Because I searched, I was like, I don't know if this is Nichi Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just shouting out my favorite slice of life works. Oh, that that's cool. Um, I don't watch the television. Yeah. I watch AI Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play video games? Uh, I play some video games. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I played a few video games, but you played something that sounds a little more sincere than probably what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. Do we want to get the sincerity out of the way? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good call. What do you have on your plate? Season A Letter to the Future is like, dude, that's a video game. You ever like played a video game and you think like, dude, that's a video game right there. I haven't had that feeling since like, I think I had a really nice time playing Inside where it was like Mm. four hours. I was like, wow, I ate that right up. Yeah. That felt like a video game. (laughs) Yeah. Season is similar in length, I think. Uh, I rolled credits this morning. And there isn't like a, or I haven't found like a hour counter, but I I think it was like five to 10 hours maybe. Ooh, what's, um, what's the deal? Only from the screenshots I saw that 
the main character has the shiny anime glasses. That I think I did say on the podcast. Yeah, that was last week, I think. Yes. Uh, so you play as a girl named Estelle, and she has the shiny glasses. Oh, okay. And essentially the plot is like, you're from this like kind of sheltered village. You haven't seen much of the outside world, and your friend has this like prophetic dream that like the season is going to end but like it's implied to be like a big deal like an end of the world kind of thing oof and you are tasked with documenting everything about the current season that you can into a little scrapbook and taking it to essentially a museum so that like once people forget about the current season uh there's like a historical document to look back to so (laughs) so okay So you travel outside of the, your village. And again, you haven't, you come across like a goat and you're like, oh, I've never seen a goat before. Like it's that type of shit. Okay. And uh, you take photos, you record audio, you um, write down, you know, little thoughts that you have and uh, some sketches. How do um, you do these things? What do you mean? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> so taking video game notes, how are you putting them into a journal are you like typing things or is there like Mm. thought bubbles so i'll use an example uh i came across like a frog on a lily pad and i took a picture of it and a really cool thing about this game like 95 percent of the things you take photos of your character will notice that they're in the photo and say something about it so she'll have something she'll think something about this frog and maybe you take audio of the frog instead and you have like a little audio clip and she'll think a thought, and then you can put that thought into the scrapbook. You're not literally like typing, you know, <laughs> frogs are cool. Just a completely free form text based journaling game. Yeah. Although, that would be tight. That would be nice. I don't know how you'd, uh, you know, quantify uh, beating a game like that. Uh, is the world ending in this, or is this really just like a nice end of season game? I guess that would be a spoiler, but. Yeah, it's a bit of a spoiler. I'll I'll say it's not world ending. I thought it was world ending Mm -hmm. the entire time, but it's not. Something else happens. Okay. And you mentioned they've never seen a goat. Yeah. (laughs) Is that normal? (laughs) No, you're you grow up in like this sheltered. It's almost like an Italian looking village on a hill. Um, With no goats. No goats. Yeah. (laughs) It's like really idyllic, dude. Yeah, I, I don't know. If you like really put yourself into the game and you try to think like, well, if I have like 25 pages to document everything about the world, like trying to figure out like what belongs in there, what should stay out of it is like a really weighty decision. From explaining it, it kind of sounded like it's not like a visual novel, right? This sounds um, you've had a lot of depth to the very simple idea I've had in my head. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, maybe i should zoom out and talk about like the gameplay like mm-hmm. it's not like a visual novel at all you do explore this world it's like um beautifully cell shaded a lot like breath of the wild it's like a borderlands um <laughs> it's a lot like borderlands <laughs> <laughs> there's so many guns dude yeah no and you like ride a bike throughout it all and like the bike mechanics are pretty good like it's fun to ride the bike yeah it's there's not a lot of good not all the games have the bike mechanics correct. I think maybe like uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I hate yeah. to compare this game to a lot of violent games like Borderlands and Grand Theft Auto, but that game had good bike mechanics. Can you pop a wheelie? Dude, okay. I was literally just about to say. <laughs> Close your eyes, right? All or right. If you, do you have a game controller on yeah, you? Yeah, 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 I do. Close your eyes and hold it in your hand. Mm-hmm. This is going to be like a little experiment. Yeah. All right. So you're riding your bike down like a dirt path with your left thumbstick. When you press it down, what happens? I'm, I'm riding on the back tire. Right. I'm popping a wheelie. There's no wheelies in this game. I, when you put your left thumbstick down, it uh, it stops the bike. <laughs> My sole beef with this game. Like. That seems like a simple thing. If you have a bike in your game, it should be a requirement to pop a wheelie. Or like if if you put the left thumbstick down, just don't do anything. Because <laughs> that yeah. should be like a sign to wheelies only. <laughs> well, how else would you get off the bike? What would be your get off bike button? Um, like circle? Yeah, right. 
Okay, I mean, it sounds like doing stunts on the bike is probably not the focal point of this game. No, but it, it would, would be cool. Yeah, it would it would add to it. That would if give me like, um, <laughs> like a Matt Hoffman's. <laughs> oh my god! Was that the bike guy who had like a Tony Hawk game? Uh, you thinking of? Uh, I think Dave Mira had one. No, there's like a Matt Hoffman video game. Matt Hoffman probably had one. Um, Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX. Richie, Anywho. you're, you're going to be ex- so excited by what I'm bringing to the show. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. Um, we'll get there though <laughs> yeah i can i can close off a little bit there, so there's so many like little moments that i wouldn't want to spoil but like if i could bring one like minor um just like setting spoiler to kind of like encapsulate something that i like really enjoy about this game mm-hmm. so there's this one specific area that's like the emotional crux point of everything and a man-made disaster is about to happen to it so they're trying to flee this area yeah so like i stumble upon this area and there's this field of cows uh just like abandoned cows because the farmer had left um and couldn't bring his cows along obviously and you're you like photograph these cows and you (laughs) record them mooing and stuff and like you stumble upon a note that mentions that they had like a favorite radio station to listen to music to (laughs) so like i I turn on the radio and it's like classical music and then all the cows gather and like everything is like so draped in melancholy because you feel like the world's going to end and like you want to like bring these characters joy before this thing happens, whatever it is. And yeah, I like photographed every cow. I put on their favorite song and tried to give them peace, (laughs) I guess. That is absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. But it's... In like a that bittersweet kind of way, happy sad. Like, are you a fan of of Titanic, the big the to... big the big boat movie? Are you about to say you haven't seen Titanic? <laughs> oh, all right, I'm going to stop you there. But anywho, so um, I don't want to spoil how Titanic ends, but there's a scene where it feels like maybe the end is is coming, and then there's this quartet who yeah <laughs> who plays. <laughs> Who plays music and you know with uh the things going on they just play this uh beautiful beautiful piece over um you know the impending doom yeah it kind of sounds like this cow scenario here i wasn't expecting such a wonderful and apt simile <laughs> to titanic but you absolutely did it thank you i wasn't expecting you to have not seen titanic so i'm glad you got it <laughs> i was gonna say that it's been a very long time since i've seen titanic yeah, it wasn't very accessible as a kid. It was two VHS tapes. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and there was like technically nudity in it, so like you couldn't watch it at school. Yeah, good point. They wouldn't show it. Wow, that would eat up a whole school day. Yeah. Oh that'd, God. That'd be the best. <laughs> You're like three periods. Oh my gosh. Um. So where can I play this game? Is it? I hate to ask, but is, do you know if it's on Game Pass? Um. I think it's actually only on PlayStation and PC. Okay. Um, I have both of those things and maybe our listeners do too. I would recommend it. Like if you're down for something like, I I feel like the term meditative gets used a lot for video games, but for a game that like literally asks you to take note of what you're hearing, I would recommend like playing this with earbuds because like, yeah, like I heard a frog and it was in my right ear. (laughs) Oh, nice. uh, I was like, Oh, I don't know. When you actually meditate, you're supposed to actually like hear things, acknowledge it, and then try to let it go. It's not about just like becoming nothing. Um, yeah, it's from like my a, limited knowledge. From what I've always thought, it's like a way to kind of take a step back from yourself and really process individual things. Mm-hmm. You know, to yeah. t- take in your surroundings. Yeah, and you want with game, the frog. It like literally asks you to. Take note of what you're seeing, what you're hearing. Um, unfortunately, video games can't do like taste or uh, smells. Yeah, not yet. We don't get that that TR, the taste reality. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for it. That'd be great. Just put a big stinker in the PlayStation VR headset and yeah. maybe like a a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> <A> tongue. <laughs> oh, dude, can I say one more thing? Yeah, please. There, so I came across this, this happens in like the first 10 minutes of the game. I came across this instrument that plays music automatically 
and the controller rumbles and you know how like vibration has like a pitch to it yeah especially like on ps5 the, the controller vibration was playing the song along with it like that my sp- controller speaker was off it was just like vibrating different pitches whoa that blew my mind you were able to feel sound yeah actually That's and kind of nice some, sometimes you hear like people's voices and like you f- feel their voice <laughs> actually in the vibration oh i guess that like you can so uh w- when i am trying to get rowan to fall back asleep like he'll mm-hmm. have his head on my chest and i'll like either like hum or say things he likes uh he likes when i hum that one song from the doors i can't think of right now really yeah the doors yeah <laughs> what the hell is that song i don't, I don't know. know it was a need for speed underground but it knocks him right out <laughs> So I think he likes just like the vibration that's coming out of my chest rather yeah, than probably you, actually liking the song. Yeah, you can like feel a person's voice. Yeah, no, that's the second very apt comparison. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. But like the way you're explaining this, this is kind of scratching an, an itch where like, so I really liked like Journey, Abzu, um, Flower. Like they're really like, quick games you could kind of, burn through and same with like inside and uh limbo but yeah now that like i think signalis is the new one i'm not Mm. in the mood for that one i want something nice like what you're explaining here yeah despite all of like the melancholy and sadness that's like draped over everything it's a very nice game the there's like characters in this game it's not just like um like your journey or like abzu kind of stuff yeah, because I and I definitely think as like we're getting newer games, I think those types of games could be doing more. And it sounds like this game's firing on more cylinders that maybe I'd be into. Yeah, it has like my highest recommendation. I thought it was like a fantastic video game. Dude, the writing's really good. Oh, so is there voice acting? Yeah, and that's hit or miss. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I, I feel like whenever I like a game's writing i tend to say that it feels like a poem that and yeah a lot of the things that are like said in this game could just be like a straight up poem it's good man oh i guess the last question i'll ask is uh it's it's not like a 70 dollar game right (laughs) no i think it was like 25 ish okay Okay, that's tolerable i can deal with that yeah (sighs) yeah and uh you really get to like develop your photography eye actually because it's not like pokemon snap you're on rails like you only see the things that you want to see Ooh, it's, it's like a really good photography game okay so you actually had um i knew your complaint with pokemon snap is that like professor oak is trying to get you to have that pokemon right in the center of the shot does this yeah. kind of give you any of like creative control over the camera i know like the placement obviously but what about uh sepia or valencia or xl pro can we put gram filters on these shots yeah no there's filters you can go through oh Uh, hell yeah you can change the depth of field uh so like certain things are blurry in the background or foreground yeah and there's no professor who doesn't know what they're talking about telling you that your shots suck (laughs) because you're you're just documenting what you see well that fool was just trying to make like a encyclopedia no i think it was like a power play the hell's a power play a powerpoint no (laughs) He was trying to assert dominance. Oh, he's just a jerk. <laughs> I'm the professor. I think your photography sucks. I invented the Pokedex. <laughs> That's my Professor Oak Pokemon snap voice. It was really good, actually. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> You've played a lot of Pokemon snap, haven't you? Yeah, the N64 one, man. I didn't like that new one. Yeah. I it made me you. sick. Really? Yeah, I got like dizzy. Because you could either do like One, it felt like, you know, I just didn't want to be on the rails (laughs) anymore. (laughs) I wanted to get off of Mr. Bones' wild ride. Um, But like the quick turn just kind of made me sick and I always felt like I was missing a Pokemon. It would give me, uh, I think, really anxious for some reason. I'd be Mm. like, oh, these shots are leaving me and now I have to do the level again. It wasn't like a nice, uh, I didn't feel like a safari photographer. You know, I didn't get my Nat Geo experience. Well, I feel like Pokemon Snap could learn a lot from this game. And like 
honestly, like Pokemon Legends Arceus is probably a better photography game because, <laughs> again, just you have like that free roaming angle and you can shoot whatever you want. I think Pokemon Snap would be a lot better if it was a lot like Seasons, A Letter Ooh. to the Future. Yeah, yeah, we need that game. Yeah. Now, you were talking about Matt Hoffman, Pro BMX. Yeah. What if I told you I brought eight different Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games to the show? <laughs> you played all of them? I played as many as I could stomach. For fun? Uh, For science. Uh, for science. <laughs> So, okay. um, did you did you play the Tony Hawk games as a, a youngster, or even in like uh, more recently? I know uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two was remade. So I played Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two on the was that a GameCube game? Yeah. So that one uh, surprisingly came. Out, it was on the game. Uh, it was on N sixty four for sure. Oh, okay. It might have been on the GameCube though. I played that one, and I played the, um, they call it American Wasteland? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you was can, a newer one. Get off your skateboard? Yeah. Well, you could start to get off your skateboard in, they started that in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Okay. And I then you could do it well. again in Tony Hawk's Underground 1 and 2. T- underground, not American Waste. Tony Hawk's Underground, yeah. Yeah, Underground 1 and 2 came before Wasteland. Dude, Thug. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I played Thug 1 and Thug 2. Okay, great. So, originally, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, they were on the N64, and mm-hmm. then Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 was the one, on, it was on PlayStation 2, but had one of like the best soundtracks ever, but that was the one where they introduced Bam Margera as a playable character. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. So, what I realized is that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 was also on the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I had Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 only on the Game Boy Advance. Which, yeah, did you know they made every single Tony Hawk's Pro <laughs> Skater game up until American Wasteland on the Game Boy Advance? I didn't know that they did four or one or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, even worse, they did one and two on the Game Boy Color. Yeah, so and I'm three. assuming, <laughs> did you play the 2D ones? I downloaded all of them on the Game Boy Advance. Hell yeah. <laughs> How's that experience? Okay, so uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 was my favorite. So I figured I'd start with that one on the Game Boy Advance. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, oh my god. Okay, that was from 2001. Yikes. Oh, yeah. okay. So IGN also rated that game. They gave it a 9.7 out of 10 back in the day. And they Nearly said it, perfect. Yeah, and they said it should go down in history as one of the best Twitch fests on PlayStation 2. Yes, Tony Hawk 3 is that good. The perfect skating game remains a small distance out of reach, but if you are not satisfied with your purchase of this game, head examinations are recommended. And just so, like, everyone's clear, is this the game where, like, you pee off of a cliff and you find out if it, like, freezes before it hits the ground or y- something? yeah. Yeah, I think this is the one with uh, where peeing was one of the little like uh, achievements to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if Just, you don't like yeah. it, you need a head examination. <laughs> uh, the diagnosis. You, diagnosis yeah. from IG. <laughs> if you don't like the piss joke, you better get your head checked out. But what... So somehow they kept pumping every single one of these out on the Game Boy Advance, which mm-hmm. has been the most... Uh, not all inspiring. It was honestly, it was pretty miserable. So Tony Hawk's th- Pro Skater 3 opens up on the GBA just with the option. The very first option highlighted is just Tony Hawk. Yeah. So, <laughs> please. Obviously. I'm like, is that the game mode? <laughs> is that something? Uh, no. So the game opens up and you can pick your character, mm-hmm. which somehow they, um, let me throw some names at you and see if uh, yeah. maybe your favorite skateboarders in the list. Yeah. Okay. We got Tony Hawk. Bam yep. Margera, Kareem Campbell, nice. Rune Glyphberg, Ooh, okay. Bucky Lassick, yeah. Chad Muska, Andrew Reynolds, uh, Jeff Rowley, Eric Costin, Elise Steamer, Jamie Thomas, Steve Caballero. Now, hold on, here's a good one. Rodney Mullen. 
All right, that's my favorite. That's yep. my favorite skateboarder of all time. <laughs> Huge Rodney Mullen fan. Yeah. That legend. fool just does weird stuff with the board. <laughs> he invented the kickflip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so like uh, none of that is apparent in the Game Boy Advance version of these games. <laughs> uh, so it turns into like an isometric view. So it's a top down. Uh, you turn left and right by hitting up and down. Really? Uh, yeah, it's absolutely twisted. And all the levels are kind of laid out where they almost like turned them into a loop. Where the goal is to kind of try and like collect skate, get the hidden tape, get like grind over something, jump a helicopter all in one kind of loop. Uh, freeze gets, your freeze your P. Yeah, freeze freeze your P. Yeah. Um. Oh, and uh, Darth Maul is not in this one. Damn it. Yeah, Darth Maul is only in the PS2 version. The Game uh, Boy Advance version has Wolverine. Missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, Could you imagine? <laughs> In the middle of those lit of the lit of the skaters that you mentioned, mm-hmm. it's like, oh yeah, um, Rune Glyphberg, uh, Rodney Mullen, Darth Maul, Tony Hawk, Bam Margera. <laughs> uh, it's a Shrek. Opportunity, yeah. Which, mind you, Shrek was in Thug too. So, and <laughs> he he, <laughs> he rode around on a on a like his uh, door from his swamp. Yeah, yeah, it was a big crappy piece of plywood. Uh, but yeah, so Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 on the Game Boy Advance is almost unplayable. It w- <laughs> It is a nightmare. Wait. So the IGN review, that was for the PlayStation? It was for the PS2 version. Right, right. Okay, just um, confirming. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that if you if you don't like this game on the Game Boy Advance, you do not need to get your head checked out. Yeah. So from there, just because I 3 was my favorite. So I was like, all right, fine. And then I went and played 2. For some mm-hmm. reason, two not only looks better on the Game Boy Advance, it plays significantly better too. Okay, how does it differ gameplay wise? Uh, so it it looks exactly the same, but like the ramps are actually like you know the the vert ramps, the grind rails, uh, they're all spread out in kind of a way that actually makes more sense. Like there's this three struggle to convey depth on the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> which i don't, I don't blame them yeah, yeah i don't blame them it's, it sounds it's like a, a hard weird task <laughs> yeah the the more impressive thing here is that the studio of vicarious visions just for some reason felt compelled to make sure that there was some version of tony hawk on the handhelds yeah which for better or worse they did get the games on the handhelds that had to be like a top-down decision right like uh so this company exclusively does this. <laughs> they make like two versions of all their games. Yeah, they're the ones they also tasked to port Guitar Hero to the Nintendo DS. So they invented that like guitar attachment for the DS. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So they're the ones responsible for that. And they're also the people that puts... Uh... <laughs> if you remember Skylanders... My brother was a big like Spyro Skylanders person. Yeah, was that like Amiibos? Yeah, they had their own like early version of Amiibos. But yeah. this is the same company that built the portal specifically for handhelds to like make compatibility work. So this is like this company is disgusting. Their whole goal is to make some form of game on these little handhelds. I, I feel so much empathy for the people who have to like accomplish that task because I'm sure it, it's coming down from some ceo that doesn't know anything who's like no this has to be on all of the consoles yeah but so two is a very good game it it plays really well in the gba the rest of them not so much especially yeah. when you get to tony hawk's underground you do have a character creator so you make like this kind of formless shirtless freak with a skateboard yeah. um and all these games have just like unlicensed midi thrash songs okay because they can't use the real no oh you know what there is a good one but this probably won't go well for like an audio portion but folks were complaining because tony hawks have historically had pretty good soundtracks yeah so much so that they actually did put licensed music in thug 2 on the game boy advance okay but does it have to be like 16 bit (laughs) It is bit crushed to all hell. If I can send you 
Yeah, I just sent you a quick link, and they loop like a chorus of a song, so it's like a completely crushed, compressed version of a song that they just loop an awful chorus. Okay, should I listen to this, and then we get like a live reaction? Yeah, if you want a live reaction, um, Metallica's Whiplash is somewhere in there. Oh, I wish this had like time codes. Yeah, the full soundtrack can fit in a four-minute YouTube video. Oh, I skipped right to the Metallica one. This is <laughs> disgusting. And they haven't done it since. Oh, I just heard James Hatfield. Yep. <laughs> Maniac. <laughs> That's so bad. Yeah, it's a complete nightmare. So they, and then um, when it actually went back to American Wasteland, which, yeah, was right after Thug 2. So they still created an American Wasteland port for the GBA and the DS at this age and time, because now we're at, I think, up to 2006, maybe. Yeah. But they had to call it American Skateland, and it has all unlicensed music. Do you know why, by any chance? I was trying to look into it. I think it's just because the game, at this point, we now had American Wasteland, which also released on the 360. Mm -hmm. So it was more apparent that, like, this was a different game than what people on consoles were buying. Yeah. Like, it didn't matter so much before, because, like, you, know, you didn't really have options, but they could get away with releasing, uh, you know, and it was actually American Skateland was released on the Game Boy Advance, the DS, PC, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, and I believe the GameCube that's everything isn't it at least for the time the ps3 was should be somewhere around there but i don't know but it was such just like a weird period in time when like you could have a game and they were just like you know we got to get this on every single console imaginable and it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter what the game is because then they still managed to go through and put tony hawks one two and three on the game boy color now three on the game boy color has no music it's just like a black background and purple ramps okay (laughs) like it's just a completely nothing game how Um, do you do moves oh so well on the game boy advance ones you have the triggers are mapped to whether or not you're going to do a grab move or like a kickflip type move oh yeah yeah you know if you want to do a melon grab you hold uh the left trigger and like down yeah like a christ air maybe yeah if you want to nail like a little christ air you want to um do a dark slide because there's also um there's a grind button and an ollie button okay that's your a and b and then the triggers determine grab or flip and do what about manuals oh uh manuals you uh just like in the console games you do a little up down up down that's universal that's what i was talking about with a wheelie yeah with a wheelie kick it flip it a little forward flip it back uh same with like nose slides and stuff and then you got to bounce it out um Mm -hmm. but i so because of like the compressed music and stuff um i had to continue playing tony hawk's underground 2 yeah you just had to see it through yeah so this this one was actually okay i mean the music is terrible so as long as you turn the sound off it does still follow the same story as the original one like you get kidnapped by Bam Margera and Tony Hawk's just like, sorry, cuz Bam's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the the correct thing to do right there is call the police. Usually that's not the answer, but I think if you're kidnapped. Yeah, you, just, you can't just say. <laughs> you should maybe call the cops. Yeah, you know, your kidnapper's kind of crazy. Yeah, dude, sorry. He's just like that. Yeah. So, I, I mean, through this whole, like, just awful terrible hole i fell down there is some fun to be had with yeah specifically thug 2 if you ignore the music the first underground nightmare yeah do you have a favorite song from tony hawk's pro skater 2 like the real soundtrack or yeah like the licensed soundtrack let me see what was on there is that the one with superman from goldfinger yeah i think so that's probably gonna be it but did, um, did that have the Public Enemy Anthrax collab? I think that's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Is it really? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 also had CKY. They had a like quite bitter, quite bitter feelings, quite something. 
bring the noise yeah tony hawk pro skater too oh yeah oh my eyeballs are messed up and it looked like papa roach did bring the noise i got all <laughs> turned up oh and gorilla radio from rage against the machine yeah that i'm pretty sure that's like a formative experience for people like whether you skateboard in real life or like you picked up tony hawk pro skater you probably heard like anthrax and rage against the machine and then suddenly like listen to metal or like hardcore punk your the rest of your oh, life oh when worlds collide by power man 5000 banger oh my gosh what was on tony hawk's pro skater 3 my brain's all messed up from like the midi thrash songs <laughs> <laughs> all right so tony hawk's pro skater 3 had some alien ant farm on there Ooh. okay some 41 was on there I don't know, man. The soundtrack wasn't as good, I think. Wow. Oh, the Blitzkrieg bop. Ramones. <laughs> Ace of Spades from Motorhead. Never mind. Three's good again. <laughs> um, 96 just... Quite Bitter Feelings. I'm sorry. That's him? Uh, 96 Quite Bitter Beings is what I meant. That's by CKY, who's like CKY. him adjacent, as in uh, they were probably on here because they're friends with Bam Margera. Right, right so kooky on viva la bam these are memories that were buried very deep in my brain yeah that was the real uh the real purpose of this segment sure i played the games and it was a nightmare but i kind of wanted to just like see what happens when like old skateboarder names get into your noggin would you say it was an american nightmare it was <laughs> it was an american uh skate mare it was a tony hawks underground american nightmare oh my Okay, and Downhill Jam also made it to the GBA, so I did miss one. I don't know that one. That one came after American Wasteland or Skateland, and it did was designed come? for the Wii. And there's like a physical board, right? Nope, that was the next one. Oh God, what was that one? Uh, oh my gosh, and that one also had Billy Joe Armstrong, the lead singer from Green Day. But Downhill Jam was uh, just completely a like downhill racing game. Mm-hmm. And you would tilt the Wiimote back and forth. So like more like snowboard kids. Yeah. I need to see what that looks like on the GBA. Tony Hawk. Yeah, please report. In the meantime, have you ever played snowboard kids? I, dude, this was honestly going to lead into some snowboard discussion as well. Uh, okay. Do you have more? We can J just briefly. So yeah. um, in Tony Hawk's pro skater. Oh, God. Okay, this was in three on the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> yeah. You could unlock Sean Palmer. Who's with, a snowboard person. Yeah. Right. They made yeah. Sean Palmer's pro snowboarder. Yeah, along with Matt Hoffman's pro BMX. Yeah. So that one existed. They only got gave it one game. It didn't do well, so they didn't make another. Yeah. Um, and you could design Sean Palmer's skateboard uh, as a snowboard. So it just like made no sense. Well, they had to compete with 1080 and like SXS Tricky mm -hmm. and like Snowboard Kids, obviously. Oh, and there was a demo for this game hidden in the PlayStation 2 version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. It was hidden? You, I mean, you had, there was like a, uh, like secret menus where you could watch like, you know, live videos of all the skateboarders. Like everyone had yeah. their own skate tapes on there. And then you could go and find the Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder demo. That's unreal. Yeah, so I'm just absolutely twisted up by like, I don't know if any other series has done this. Just hmm. like completely spread their game across every single console and then had ads for other games hidden in other games while having Shrek in Tony Hawk's Underground 2. And Darth Maul and was Spider-Man ever in Tony Hawk? Spider-Man was in, uh, I feel like it was, might have been Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. So if they made Tony Hawk pro skater five um american wasteland what kind of licensed character do you think would be appropriate in 2023 to be included i think well, like elsa yeah so as it stands all these companies specifically the one that was responsible for all these ports they were then hired to create the new uh remaster of diablo 2 by blizzard okay and now activision has merged with blizzard so this studio has been scooped up and all these games are now blizzard games 
So I think that means they could put Diva on a skateboard. What is the FTC doing? What are they up to? Yeah, that's all I'm saying. I can't let this happen. I was literally just going to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for this episode. Yeah. And then I found like this this web, (laughs) this spider web of skateboarding games that were ported from real consoles. Is is Diva in her mech, I'm assuming? Yeah, absolutely. It wouldn't be funny if she wasn't. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, these downhill jam screenshots are an absolute nightmare. They're not even worth looking at. Okay. I might indulge myself after this. I'm really it's like good. some really like liminal spaces and there's actually some pretty good gradients in the sky. Ooh, a little night scene. That's pretty good. I'll send you one. Do you think in retrospect they regret not doing just like a 2D Ali Ali uh version cuz that would probably like kill on the Game Boy Advance. Oh yeah, I think they were really trying to like maybe not push the hardware but they had to somehow make the games feel like they were still part of the tony hawks pro skateboarding franchise Mm -hmm. oh and i I do have a screenshot from my for my gaming that's um i'm gonna explain it to you yeah so so that's wolverine from the x-men and uh um, he's just landed a claw punch (laughs) into a manual yeah and then what's the other one that you sent me Oh, the first one is a screenshot from Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam. It kind of looks like AI Seinfeld. It is nearly identical to AI Seinfeld. (laughs) Oh my god, I never put that together. AI Seinfeld looks better than this, I'm sorry. It has more polygons. Yeah, more colors. Oh my gosh, these are a nightmare. But yeah, I I just wanted to bring you on this little little adventure I, I had myself in. Yeah, I appreciate it. I think... Um, Are you going to play any I'm, of these? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No, but I, I I like the nostalgia of it. No, I'll try it. I'll try some of these. Yeah, I actually I, did buy the like 1 and 2 remake. I just like... Well, I don't know. I didn't want to skate anymore. Yeah, those came on free on the PSN, so I have that too. I've been meaning to really just engage in some nostalgia. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I, if they made like a remake of Underground 1 and 2, I'd probably be into it. I like yeah. the idea of like making my own skater and being like, whoa, the pros noticed me doing a kickflip and now I'm signed. And then you go on a career like that. That was fun. Yeah. Like um, any other sports like RPG where there's like actually like a fun story mode. Yeah. You know, this is like my um, my Bengals team. I explained. Yes. We're just only my friends, and we made it to the Super Bowl. How are the Bengals doing, by the way? Shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, they lost, and now it's the it's the Chiefs versus the Birds. Yeah, Birds Chiefs. Ugh. And I, I'm in a Super Bowl pool as well. And my numbers are terrible, and I actually don't know if they're terrible. I just know I have numbers. Should we talk about how Fire Emblem the Super Bowl is? Uh, yeah, I think they're going to play the Battle of Grander Field when it starts. Did you know that there's two brothers on opposite sides of the battlefield? I did. Uh, only because, tragic? yeah, because I was watch- watching the game and someone pointed out that there was brothers. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, but, and they do a podcast together. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's the Kels brothers. So they're probably going to break up after this. Um, Do you think we'll ever find ourselves on opposite sides of the battlefield? Absolutely. Probably when Street Fighter 6 comes out. Yeah, because I'm going to win. You're going to lose. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and uh, uh, Andy Reid, the former coach of the Eagles, is now the coach of the Chiefs. Yeah, like the disgraced king that has switched sides. Mm Mm-hmm. This fight is canon, and... uh, as disappointed as I was that the Bengals lost, it felt like this uh, kind of turnout has a much better lore. Um, yeah. And I can get behind it because I can apply it to a Fire Emblem battlefield. Yeah, absolutely. Knowing that these brothers grew up together and now they have to kill each other. And literally like a turn-based game. Oh. <laughs> Where's the game, yeah. Richie? I need the turn-based football game. 
dude football is already turn based well i <laughs> need bounds are. i need a well honestly so you've you've played the the madden games right you know like when you're picking a play it shows like the arrows of where everyone's moving to yeah i played madden 03 i think i found out yeah, they, they've had that since, you know, ye olden days. I used to play it on the Sega Genesis, but... Oh, okay. I used to play it on the NES. Dude, I painted it on a cave. I played it when it was called Football. What were we saying? Oh, I, I realized that I played Madden 03 because that was the one with Andrew WK on it. Oh, is it? was it the party song? Yeah, dude. Oh. <sighs> Games used to have really good soundtracks. I wonder if they still do, and I just don't play games with soundtracks anymore. Well, like licensed what? music. I play like, uh, you know, I love my JRPG soundtracks. Yeah, I, uh, this might be untrue, but we've never spoken 100% truth on this thing anyway, so I'm just going to say it. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 re-release has like modern tracks. Eeks. Like it's not Goldfinger and public enemy and anthrax tony hawks pro skater to remaster <laughs> soundtrack people love this segment when we google shit live hey we just don't we don't want to lie to our people yeah there's somebody named charlie brown jr <laughs> and chick norris but hey That's superman so from goldfinger is on here okay oh but so is machine gun kelly oh. right right that's what i'm saying Okay, so they just like mixed a bunch of stuff in here. They got real big fish, sublime. Ooh, real big fish. Hmm, fantastic. Swinging udders are on here. Of course. You don't want to miss anything from the swinging udders. Yeah, or Charlie Brown Jr. Or the Destroy Boys. Duck eat duck world. Okay. <laughs> um. So you haven't played Snowboard Kids. <laughs> yeah sorry that was the real point of this segment uh no <laughs> <laughs> do you know what it is no i've heard it's um it talked about fondly by you it's a snowboarding game made by atlas uh like my people can you date in it like your people no i don't think so Ooh. Um, it's essentially mario kart but snowboarding and made by atlas whoa they made this on the ds but it's just called sbk I kind of like that. Although that's uh, no, I was thinking of Sweet Chin Music. Wait, no, SB Sh Sean Heart Sean Break Kid <laughs> Heart Heartbreak Kid, right? HBK. Yeah, Sean Break Kid. Yeah, Sean Break Kid. <laughs> All right, uh, I just sent you. I love this. All right, so I just sent you the box art for SBK on the DS. That's sick, dude. Yeah, it's I like way was... more anime. But like, what the hell's the one on the original box art? Looks like a a Rayman. It looks like a... They have like proboscis monkey noses. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's a proboscis monkey. <laughs> yeah, that's excellent. Uh, what the hell? All right, this is the nostalgia I'm going to engage in. Because I definitely played this on the N64 back in the day. Yeah, I'll mess with... um, I'll pull out my Snowboard Kids cartridge and uh, play this. Yeah, I'm going to find a copy of uh, Snowboard Kids SBK. Oh, can we... All right, so I know like we've just been kind of bringing stuff each week for a little bit. You want to schedule that for next week? Yeah, do you want to schedule um, an N64 episode? We'll pick like two two or three games or something. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely Snowboard Kids, though, because I have not played this at all. Okay. And I've never laid eyes on these proboscis monkey Rayman people. Well, prepare Whoa. yourself. One of them looks like a vampire. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, we'll have to talk about and 64 stuff next week cool and it's maybe we can pick some stuff that's on the switch online store so i can use my wireless n64 controller you know i like talking about that mm -hmm. it's good stuff yeah. but uh hey i don't have any more tony hawk to talk about yeah uh no i haven't really been playing anything else there's somebody named shinobin in snowboard kids shinobin it's a ninja with weapons that snowboards I remember, was there like a Nancy? I'm just... Oh, Linda. Oh, there was a Nancy. <laughs> Shinobin. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this game looks I'm gonna sick. Play, I'm going to play some Snowboard Kids and we'll talk about it next his, week. His speed is just listed as two and a half. I don't know what that means. Yeah. 
Um, by the way, I'm really glad that we didn't do Tony Hawk before season. That's what I'm saying. I was like, dude, I this isn't good, but I can't believe you mentioned Matt Hoffman's pro BMX during your segment. Yeah, I was not expecting a such a clean transition. Then. <laughs> See, we don't even need to discuss what we're going to talk about. I just kind of want to talk about snowboard kids. Yeah, me too. Uh, so you want to? Um, how do they end Seinfeld? You want to do um, that for us? Yeah, usually it's like, uh, how do they end Seinfeld? Do you want to do the stand up as the ending? Yeah. Um. Let's. I gotta get my Jerry, my Jerry voice. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you hear about the guy who uh, invented the the knock knock joke? He uh, won the the Nobel Prize. <laughs> okay. was, that, was that good yeah that was pretty good um the audience loved it the credits are rolling the the um seinfeld credits are rolling and it says that you can find uh me online at richcredell.tumblr.com hey you can find me uh starring on seinfeld no uh uh beastmo james at mstdn.games on mastodon love it check out our youtube yeah. there's stuff on there dja podcast wherever forever <laughs>